This week we're talking entertaining. That's right, silly season is upon us. So today we start in the kitchen with a healthy version of one of Monique's favorite party foods. And as well as that, it's an exciting time because we have wine expert Timothy Giles coming into the studio to talk about what to drink this summer. All this and so much more on Easy Living with Monique Bradley. Well, no, my heart and my welcome to the studio. I'm Monique Bradley, and if we haven't met before, welcome to my kitchen. It's really exciting to have you guys here today. In fact, before we even start, Wills Leonard, morena to you. Great to see you on board. Tracy Marie Huia, kia ora to you. Anita Prasad, big loves back to you over there in Melbourne. I can see Annette Goumet's watching from Australia. Stephen Samuel Johnston, so many of you. And Rachel Thompson, you're going to love today's show because it's one of our favourite topics. We're talking about entertaining and also one of my favorite subjects of all time wine yes while I'm a low-carb lifestyler and yes I have lost 40 kilos uh, following a, a low-carb lifestyle I do like to partake of a drop of wine now and again quite regularly because you know what I also like to live a life of fun and if wine is part of that then that's what I'm going to do. Today I'm going to start by showing you a really good low carb recipe which is really cheap to make and it replaces one of my favorite party foods when I'm entertaining. So we all love it when we go to those parties right and you've got those lovely little mini mince pies or those mini quiches. Well I love them too. Now when you're a low carb of course you can't use pastry. So I still wanted to create a low carb savory recipe that still had something to bite into it. It wasn't just one of those breakfast frittatas, it was something a little bit different. And the answer by Jingo's by Hokey is actually broccoli. Who knew, right? So I've been testing recipes for the last oh, couple of months to see what's going to work to ensure you still get something really delicious and kind of cheesy and, and yummy to bite into. And then you can fill your broccoli pastry case with whatever topping you want, whether it's a savory mince, whether it's a delicious kind of quiche filling. You can put in there, you can keep it completely vegetarian or you can add in some meat. It's entirely up to you. So the first thing you need to do, I have blended up in my Nutri Ninja bullet, I've blended up some broccoli in here. Now, if you've ever made my other low carb recipes like my cauliflower hash browns or any of the cauliflower dishes, you'll know that cauliflower tends to be quite liquid. Now, broccoli works completely differently. Broccoli doesn't have all that water coming out at the end, so you don't need to squeeze this. I haven't pre-cooked the broccoli just completely raw, we're gonna cook this in the oven. So I've got broccoli, I've even included the stalks in here because it's all tasty and yummy. This is the last of my broccoli going into the blender as well. On this one, I'm actually gonna add in a clove of garlic. I'm gonna add in, very shortly, a little lug of olive oil and give it a good shake down and I'll add in some cheese as well. And the olive oil and the cheese are what's gonna hold it all together. That is going to be absolutely delicious. So that's the last of my broccoli, and that forms the bulk of my case. A little bit left there in the bottom, we'll pull that big chunk out. Look at that, all that, I'll tell you what, that garlic goes so nicely in here. It just really adds a nice flavor. Now often with low carb recipes like this, they tend to be very eggy smelling. So the answer to that, because I'm not actually, you know, I don't like that egg smell. I love eggs and I eat them every day because they're so good for our bodies, but I don't like that smell so much. So adding in lots of things like some, a good bit of pepper in there is really good. I'm gonna put in a big pinch of salt because you know, salt is fabulous. I love it. Into here, I'm gonna crack an egg like that super simple look at that so quick as well who else is watching today yes rachel thompson i know you're happy we're talking about wine today i'm so excited seriously this is one of my favorite shows because we've got three amazing wines to talk about this morning and we're going to talk about budget conscious options as well so if you are looking for a good wine in your supermarket we're going to give you some ideas from a wine expert what to actually look for into here right i've got that i'm going to add in a whole lot of cheese. Now I'm using a mix of uh, mozzarella because I love it and some parmesan. Parmesan for the flavor and mozzarella because it's kind of um, kind of stringy but when it cooks and when it cools it actually holds everything together. So yeah one of my favorites and a big lug about a teaspoon a bit more of olive oil. 
So this is absolutely delicious. Now these will cook in around or oh, 20 minutes in the oven and you want to cook the cases before you put any of the fillings in first. And that's because I really like, I don't want something sort of soggy in the bottom. I want something that's a little bit crispy, has a bit of bite to it. Look at that. Oh, seriously, I wish you guys could smell this because it's so very good. Rangi Barnett, kia ora to you. Kei te pihi a koe tēnei rā. Hope you're doing well. I'll tell you what, Rangi, I was so proud of you. Coming runner-up in Mrs. New Zealand, you were absolutely stunning. Your national costume, which is what you won in the show, was incredible. Not just the outfit, but the performance. I'm so proud of you, Rangi. Um, so kei te pai, kei te pai. Shout-outs to you. Okay, so you see, this is all mixed through. It's still pretty chunky, and that's what we want because all that cheese is going to melt down. Move my board out of the way. And then, basically, so one broccoli, just cleaning up my bench there, one broccoli is going to make you probably 12 of these savouries or these savoury cases. So... <laughs> In a fit of um, excitement the other day, I realized I needed two display tins, so I cut my silicon uh, pie tin or muffin tin in half so that I could show you some befores and afters during the show. What you want to do is you actually want to pour a tiny bit of the oil in the bottom, and the reason why is that I want a bit of a crispy bottom, right? We don't want anything too poured way too much in there. We don't want anything too um, too soft. I, I do like it a little bit crunchy, so that little bit of oil will actually help do that. Going to wipe that around. Oh, yeah. This is so good. Now, if you're looking for other low-carb recipes, by the way, I have a whole bunch of them on my website, uh, moniquebradley.co.nz. And, oh, they're seriously so good. You can, you know, it's one of the first times in my life that I've been able to have my cake and eat it too. Like, literally, I'm not even kidding. The low-carb sponge cake, the low-carb pavlova. Um, in a couple of weeks' time, I'll be coming back into the kitchen to actually show you how to make low-carb gingerbread, which is wonderful for this time of year, but also it's fantastic for a gift, and it's really tasty. And I think what I like best is that you can't actually tell it's low-carb. It's It just tastes like any old food, except it's not loaded with those sugars. There's no white flour in it. It's just delicious. So something I do love about this too is the fact that it, look, gluten-free, boom, winning at life. Okay, so all you're going to do is you're going to press this around and you want to make sure you've got it pretty even all the way around because you want you want to create this little kind of pie case out of your out of your broccoli there. And you might think, oh, it's very liquidy, it's very watery. Don't worry, it all cooks away. And in fact, what, what you kind of get left with is this beautiful kind of broccoli cheesy case. And some of the cheese actually melts down into the center, which I thought was delicious. Oh yeah, there we go. So what am I going to put in this today? Well, I've pre-cooked, I pre-cooked some yesterday for you to show you how they turn out. That look, looks pretty good there. And what I love about these is that they are pretty versatile. So once you've made the cases, you can kind of get creative. And I made some, I found, I looked in the fridge and I thought, what have I actually got? And I had some spring onions and I had some cherry tomatoes. So I whipped up in my blender a little mix of um, a little bit of egg and you can use a little bit of cream or um, you can use some full fat milk and made up kind of a quiche filling with some salt and some pepper. You can add a little bit of garlic in there as well. Delicious. And they come out like these little tiny delicious quiches. Uh, but yeah, Mexican mince, delicious. And then make sure you add a good hefty layer of cheese on the top because it's the cheese that really works in this and holds everything together. Right, so you get the idea. Once you've made your little cases like this, you're gonna put it in, a, in an oven at around 220 degrees. 200, 220 degrees. You know your oven better than I do. I put everything on fan bake because I like it a lot and I get the best results. It makes your cakes puffier, it makes your scones fabulous, it makes your biscuits awesome um, and yeah pretty much it's all my oven does so I, I just roll with it and um, yeah you want to cook these up and you'll know when they're cooked because they'll start to go very solid and um, the, the case will hold together completely um, yeah basically completely which is good what I did do as well because I was testing the different heats is I actually flipped the cases over once they were cooked and just crisped crisped it's a hard word to say at this time of the morning, crisped up 
the bottom as well. So yeah, another five minutes in the oven. Once your cases are done, put your filling in, whatever it is. It could be, look, if you want to make little fish pies in these, oh, even though I'm not a fish eater at all, I can appreciate that would be delicious. Okay, so there you go. That's how to make your, your little broccoli pastries there. I'll just move that out of the way. And the most important thing to remember with all low-carb food, it is not... The one thing I'm looking for is I'm looking for either the texture or the flavor. So it's not thinking about, oh, it's not as good as flour. It's completely different from flour, but the flavors are sensational. And if you're looking at doing a low carb lifestyle, you're trying to lose a little bit of weight, you know, those sorts of things, getting rid of those foods that might be a bit too processed, this ensures that you don't feel like you're missing out. And that is what I love about it. So that's going in the oven, 220 degrees. I'll just put it on my stove top for the minute. Now, when I made them, I just whipped up some quickly yesterday. So here's three that I made yesterday. I made six. I kind of did a little bit of a botch job pulling them out of the container, but you can see you've got this little case here. Now, what do you want to put on top of it? Oh, that would be amazing with some savory mints and then, oh, some delicious, a little bit of um, sour cream would be amazing. So you've got these little cases. What I would normally do is leave them in the tray once they're cooked. Again, you can flip them over. You can toast the bottom. Put your filling on top and then you're going to, once you've got your filling in there, added your cheese on top, you're going to put that back in the oven for about five minutes. And you want to do that to ensure that everything's all cooked through, heated through, and then serve them straight away. Delicious. So how did they look? Well, these are my little mini quiches from yesterday with this beautiful broccoli bottom. And I kind of burnt the top, but you know, it doesn't matter. It's my kitchen, my rules. So you've got this, this little case on the bottom, but the bottom as well, perfect. But I think it's good to have a lot of color. Why? Because over in Rome, I know for a fact that pastry isn't cooked until it's charred like that. So I've cooked this well. So you've got that beautiful pastry case from, made from broccoli on the bottom. And when you cut it through, seriously, all you've got is just this beautiful, delicious, the actual case is all around the outside. You've got your vegetables in the middle. You've got some spring onions here. In fact, that's pretty much what I've, I've chopped up here. Spring onions, cheese, a little bit of egg and milk, and some cherry tomatoes, and that makes a really delicious party savory. In fact, I know, I can pretty much guarantee by Jingo's by Hokey, your friends will be impressed with your culinary skill and you'll appear, you'll appear at least 50% more attractive. And that's how we roll here in the kitchen. <laughs> I have my guest on the couch who's just laughed. Um, he tried not to laugh out loud, but I know, I know for a fact he's going to go home, he's going to make this recipe, and he's going to be swamped by invitations to go everywhere this year. And that is a great entertaining recipe for this silly season. Remember, gluten-free, low-carb. It's loaded with goodness. It's loaded with nutrition. It's good protein. You can still have your savouries and eat them too this silly season. So there you go, Alison Lena, good morning to you, you gorgeous creature, Peter Haynes, Stephen Singh, Jeff Mould, lovely to see you all on the stream today, it's lovely to have you guys with us. So that's today's low carb recipe, I'll throw the ingredients list and the method onto my website www.moniquebradley.co.nz for you guys to try and seriously, make it, send me pictures, pics or it didn't happen, that's my philosophy. There you go, there's the um, website details right there. There's great recipes on there like low-carb chocolate lava cake sponge. Oh, seriously. Low-carb is such a great way to live. All right, team, it is time for Community Notice Board. Very shortly, we've got our guest coming up. We're talking about wine here on Easy Living with Monique Bradley, so do stick around and remember to ask questions. But for now, it's Community Notice Board with Monique Bradley. Coming up on the 3rd of December, I've got some gorgeous creatures who are sharing a market day. Uh, these are all women in business. They're all entrepreneurs, and they're truly amazing. This event is happening at the Winchester uh, in Mount Eden here in Auckland. And this event, see the event details there? It's a Christmas shopping event. Now, the focus is on wellness and beauty. So if you're looking for some be bespoke beauty products, it's a great place to go. Lots of amazing people to meet. For, for you women in business, it's a great networking opportunity opportunity as well. Uh, entry is free to get in and if you'd like to be part of the event you can actually get in, in, in touch with the team there, team at redcarpetball.com. Get in touch with them. If you've got products that you want to sell or you want to promote your business, they're there to help you there on the 3rd of December. It's your shopping day. That's Community Notice Board this week. Okie dokie. I'm about to head to the couch. 
for wine time. Is it too early in the day, I ask you? It's five o'clock somewhere in the world. But before we do that, I've got a quick video from one of my lovely friends and supporters of the show. Helen Thompson Carter is an amazing, inspirational woman that I completely adore. I know you've all commented about my jewelry. This is Helen's. It's part of the Fabule Vu range that uh, she has created and shares with the world. What I love about the range is that every piece tells a story. So Helen is a heart attack survivor, and this is part of her heart journey. And for me, you know, jewellery has an emotional connection, right? We create memories. We have the watch we were given from our 21st. We have our mother's pearls. Every piece in her range tells a story. And she came into the studio recently to share a little bit of wisdom about her journey to share with you. Let's take a look at the video right now. Hi, I'm Helen Thompson Carter. I'm a business owner, I'm a wife, a mother, a neighbour and a whole lot of other things. Um, and I'm also a heart attack survivor. I've been on an incredible journey um, in the last 15 years and uh, my heart attack was a real wake up. Um, not a wake up necessarily to change a whole lot of things about my life, but it was a wake up call to actually just get up and do the things that I really wanted to do. I've always wanted to have my own business and, and I have and I've dibbled and dabbled in all sorts of things. But in 2014 I got really, really brave and when I say brave, I mean brave. Um, at 50 I mortgaged the house um, and I launched Fabule Vu, a beautiful fine designer boutique jewellery brand based here in New Zealand. Uh, we now sell across the globe. We have more than 100 retailers in New Zealand um, and not necessarily doing everything right or necessarily doing everything wrong, but we're on a massive learning curve. And to all you incredible women out there, you are incredible and you can do anything that you want to do but you have to make it happen. I read this really cool thing the other day and it said there are only two things in life that actually matter. One is reasons and the other is results. But actually there is only one thing out of those two things and that is results. So, you know, if you're out there and you're thinking, what will I do, what's my life all about? Make the most of every day. Don't go to bed tonight thinking, I should have done that. Just get up and do it. Um, it's a little bit soppy, but you know, that saying, feel the fear and do it anyway, um, just embrace the fear. Take, uh, take a step back, have a look around and start your journey. You can do it, you can do it. I did, you can. Well, welcome back. Thank you very much to Helen Thompson Carter for sharing that incredible piece of wisdom. Helen, I love you and I wish you every success uh, for upcoming events. I know we're working on a market day coming up on the 10th of December. I'll be sharing details with all of you about that as well. But for now, it's time to talk about one of my favorite subjects, what to drink this season. I think we have a screen graphic coming up right now for you. Dun, 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 what to drink. That's what I called this segment. I thought it was quite evocative. <laughs> and laughing beside me here oh, on the couch goodness. is a man who's probably reg mm. regretting his life decision of joining me here today. And this is the lovely Timothy Giles. Good morning to you. Good morning. I, I love the creative hours that you thank clearly you. put into what to name the segment, so thank you. I know, it's a gift, oh, no. really. Um, <laughs> so, um, <laughs> Kate the Pihia Queer. Oh, Kate the Pihia Queer. Oh, very good. Ka pai turio. Ah, yeah, I'm all right. So, Timothy. We met, um, Pete and I were at uh, Taste of Auckland a few weeks ago and we bumped into this gentleman. We were all talking about... No, no, uh, no, 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 no. What happened? I was walking quietly, minding my own business along when this bubble of energy and Mickey came up to me. <laughs> like, we have to meet, hi! Yeah. Um, it was kind of my... It was kind of like that, yeah, yeah, because if you guys you guys have been watching the show for long enough, you know that's me. Yeah, it's off camera. Perfect, yeah. perfect. Yeah. And so, yeah, it was great. So we ended up talking about our combined love and passion of wine mm. and really what's not what's not to love. I don't remember saying that much. Okay, actually. perfect. Yeah. Yep, great. Now, you've been in the wine industry for a long time and I thought yeah. let's get people knowing about you because you've mm. been, I want to say professional wino, but it's so much more than that, isn't it? No, no, it? I was a professional drinker for a long time. Excellent. Um, but a number of years stopped and largely because there is a, a drawback to drinking 
professionally. That okay. That's the amount that one drinks. Excellent. So, and the load on the liver. Yeah. Yeah. So look, all I all I do now is I focus on um, two areas really. Um, organic biodynamic wines being one, and, and I think expanded into natural. I mean, that'd be an interesting thing to talk to you about some other time. Definitely. But, and the other area is probably more about helping friends out, really. When you're known to work about wine, the yep. most consistent text and email and question I get is, what's the best value wine? Such a good right. question. And this is, this is what many of our followers, oh, many of our followers, we're just going to move your microphone up a little bit. Oh, we've got to check right. that it's all plugged in. Oh. You're on mute, love. That's the joy of being live. That's the joy of being live. Um, a lot of a lot of people message me. So you know, as we've discussed before, I've lost forty kilos in weight. I live a low carb lifestyle. Yeah, Wine yeah. tends to have a lot of carbs in there, but people are still asking me, Monique, do you drink it? Yes, I do, and I'm still losing weight because I believe it's all about balance. Mm. Um, the bio biodynamic and organic wines, mm. I, I believe, have a better effect on your body. Because there's less process in there, right? And there's less chemicals, potentially? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not sure that, that would tie into a, a, a weight-based thing. But I guess, you know, on that, there's two things. I'd if, if you have a problem with headaches consistently, right, yes. with wine, then the first place you're going to look is sulphur and the additives. So sulphur is very, very widely used as, you know, it's an entirely natural preservative, but some of us have some reaction to that. So true. And the further you go down into sort of the value, lower priced everyday drinking end, the more you're probably going to have exposure to sulphur. So ah. if you've got issues around, you know, you'd love a glass of wine, but the glass of wine doesn't love you so much back. Yes, I've had that. Then, um, yeah, do take a look at organics and biodynamics. And look, look, today what I do want to talk about is wines that are available in the supermarket, right? So brilliant, that, brilliant. There's two organic brands to go to straight away that are available. Um, you can usually pick up a Milton in a supermarket and they're without doubt our leaders. Uh, Peter Yalen's, and we've actually got, oh, yes. a, we've got yep. a wine made by them, but um, Yalen's Estate uh, are often available. And the other guys, and I don't think many people realise this, which is that Villa Maria, who are our biggest yes. independent New Zealand-owned wine I'm rate, a fan. Yeah, well, they, <laughs> they've made a real commitment to organic. So they, they don't make it obvious on the label that this is organic. They don't scream about it because they just see this as being part of what they do. Part of their they process, yeah. yeah. So the, there are organic wines available in grocery in the supermarket. Look for them and yeah, and give that a try. You know, yeah. it might enable you to return back to enjoying some wine. So, Alison Leonard, um, I'm at work and you're hey, talking Ellie. wine. Yeah, I know, right? Ellie, we <laughs> should have you on the show. We we need to get you on here. Lynn <laughs> Nolan, good morning to you. G Hollings, Peter Lardu, I hope I said that right. Kate Nankerville, you gorgeous creature. I've been watching your transformation online. You're doing amazing. Mm. Cheryl Ann Collins, Leonard Matthews, good to see you guys. Marama Harding, Rachel Thompson's just said, love wine. I'm a professional drinker too. <laughs> yep, we love you, Rachel. So let's talk about these wines. These are wines that you've handpicked because you thought our audiences might well, love them. The folks, the great majority, I mean, I don't know off the top of my head, but it's around about eight or nine out of ten wines are bought in the supermarket, right? Wow. Now, the, the thing that we can do in the supermarket is everyone gets a bit intimidated in front of that lineup and we tend to go for what we know. Yeah, for the a real specials, shame. right? Oh, yeah, and look, the specials, and we'll talk about that. Um, the... The thing for me about, about going for what you know is you miss out on some great wines. So what I wanted to do was pull out a couple of wines that you might have seen, you might not have, but look for them. They're available in supermarkets and they they will reward you for going beyond what you consistently know. Okay. Right? So Excellent. question. So it's about being brave. Being brave and being open to trying new things, right? Definitely open to trying new things. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think there's anything brave about this. To be frank, actually, <laughs> on these wines, it's a completely safe bet that you are going to something that... To me, the reason I stopped professionally drinking was, like, like I said, drinking too much. Yeah. And it's about drink less, but drink that little bit better. And the reason for that is if it's just something, you get it cold, you get it out of the fridge and you're naked, it's gone before you know it. I'm not talking specifically to you, Ali Leonard. Um, <laughs> but the, Love you, Ali. The, the ability to get a glass of wine, and you know, right, someone gives you a wine, whether you're, you're out for dinner at someone's place or at a restaurant, and it's just that little bit better, and it's you stop, right? There's this, ooh, hang on. So instead of just chucking it down and carrying on my conversation, yeah. there's a moment of, ooh, I like that. So it's mindful drinking. Yeah, boom, well done. Ooh, <laughs> Take that. that. I'm going to trademark <laughs> yeah. that right now. Okay, because you're, it's about the experience. I'm a, I'm a tea drinker as well. Love tea, but I love the process of sitting down, having high mm. tea with somebody, mm. because you're taking that time to enjoy that boom. present moment. Yeah. And I think, especially if you're wanting to enjoy a really good quality wine as well, you know, you want to take, you don't want to lug it back. Mm. That's a whole different experience. You really want to make the most of that and moment. Twenty bucks and under, you can get great quality wine. Perfect. So, what's the first wine you've got with well, us? I wanted to ask you today? actually. So. 
we're going to look at one of two to start with, right? Yes. Are we going to go with the Pinot Gris or are we going to go with the Rosé? Which one would you tend so to go to? So my behaviour, my behaviour, <laughs> this could be a long my, my daytime behaviour <laughs> would be I would always go for a Pinot Gris. That's my go-to. I used to be a Chardonnay drinker, but mm -hmm. I've evolved into Pinot Gris. I just think it's pretty. However, if you put a Rosé in front of me, mm. the colour attracts me. And that's probably the first thing I would go to. start with that? Yeah. Got... Let's give it a whirl, sure. Interesting that you say that on rosé, right? Mm -hmm. I've, um, my grandfather was over a number of years ago now. God bless the rest of his soul. Yeah. And uh, I lined up all the best wines I had in my cellar and, and invited my closest friends over. And we had, I don't know, a table full of 18-odd wines. And yes. some pretty great wines. And rosé was up there. Yeah. And I was like, oh, no, look, I'll have the serious wine. That... But <laughs> the first wines that disappeared were the rosés. Right. Really? So look, they're meant to be fun. Have a, have a yeah. look. Yeah. Now I noticed on the label you've got lots of fruits, like um, you've got strawberries on the front. Is that what I'm to expect look. from this? Oh, oh that's pretty. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> right. No, it has a pretty aroma. That's me making the noise, not I know, noise. I was just going to say. I've noticed a lot of um, professional people in the wine industry, they always do that slurp. Ter terrible manners, right? Yeah. yeah. No, what it's about is... Um, it's about aerating the wine, and here's the thing about tasting wine. And this is a reason I'll explain about the tasting wine in a moment. But oh wow! What I want to suggest is don't have your wine too cold, even at this time of year and coming in. Like so, we haven't chilled these, and I know that when I came in, I you're was like, really surprised. Yeah. So, so the, the most it should spend is a few minutes in the fridge, right? For me, I'd actually chill the glass more than the wine, because ninety percent of what we're tasting when we're drinking wine. We're actually smelling. I mean, think about if you if you put your hand on the nose and have a drink, you can't yeah, taste you the can't thing. Yeah, you can't taste anything. Right? So it's not actually about the tongue and the palate and the taste buds. It's actually about the olfactory senses, the fragrance. So when you no. say pretty, yeah, look, yeah, look. it's pretty. And I noticed even when you open oh. the Pinot Gris, this aroma wafted out, and I just went, "Wow, I really, I can't wait to try it." This um, oh, it's very good. fruity. Okay, so here's it's, what I like about my description. No, no, look, and it's a really good, it's a really good description, right? Because yeah. When people talk about fruits and, okay, strawberries, and, yeah, that's yep. present, and stone fruits, yeah, that's present, but, yep. you know, mates of mine saying, I really like it. What does yes. it taste like? Well, it tastes like a wine. Yes. <laughs> Which I think is true. Perfect. Um, it doesn't taste like strawberries. It tastes, okay, there's a hint of that in there. Yes. But, but what really is it, right? This, it's got fruit sweetness. So when you say fruity, we can often think, oh, is it sweet? Does she mean sweet? I was and what thinking I, like apricot kind yeah, but of But what almost. I mean in that is that it's like... It's really ripe fruit, but there's no sugar finish, right? No, not at all. So the way I like to look at a wine is the way it comes through your mouth. How does it start? What does it do in the middle here? And how does it finish on onto the end, right? Mm. And often, especially at the lower end of prices with a rosé, we're going to end up with something that's a little bit sweet, right? Now yeah, this, and the too much sweetness, I think, is what gives me a headache as well the next day. Yeah, I can just and, and look, it's a different thing, right? There's a place for a sweet wine, but yep. at this time of day, at lunch, and for me in an afternoon, I don't want a sweet wine to start off with. Wow. So I love this wine. I think it's got balance and I think it's got structure. To me, the sweetness that's in there is a fruit sweetness. It's a rich fragrant appeal. So pretty was right, but it finishes dry. Right? It's yes, that's what I noticed. You know, you know when you have too much sweetness in anything and you're either looking for more sugar afterwards or you need to drink a gallon of water, you don't have that that feel afterwards, you know what I mean? Um, so this is the wine. Well, I want to talk about speaking pretty. Okay. Isn't that just a lovely label? It hey, is really hey, what's cute. What's the best way for me to place that for the label to be seen easily? Uh, let's have yeah, a look. You take charge. There we go. So uh, this, there we. the pricing on that, um, it sits in a supermarket at around about 22. That will go on special down as low as 18. It comes from Hawke's Bay. This is a 2017. It's the first of two wines today we've got made by a guy called Rod McDonald. He became very famous uh, a number of years ago as the winemaker for, for Dub Vidals um, mm. oh, for yeah. many years. Mm -hmm. But then uh, based down in the Hawke's Bay, we'll have a look at what I think is another cracker wine of his. It's around the 20 buck mark. But <laughs> it's a gorgeous label. Yes, be seduced by the label. Why? Yeah. Because the wine absolutely matches it. There's a bit of class in there. Yeah, it's quite on arty, the outside and lovely, on the inside. beautiful, yeah. absolutely. Like yourself, Monique, you know? Oh, yeah, very much. Nice description. Keep you on, that's for sure. All right. um, what do you think about so value many... for money? $22 down as low as 18 What do you think? Oh, yeah, great. Mm. Great. And you see how it's a wine that you're going to drink a little more slowly? Yes, it's more, it's yeah. not a knock it back wine. It's a sit with friends and enjoy somewhere outdoors. Very summery for me.
Good. Very summery kind of wine for me. Yeah, Peter Offord, Lynette Glory, Jane Wong, Chris Seo, Luke Gibbs, Michael Knapp, Andrew Gilbert watching from Australia, Andrew Wilson, Boris. Oh, congratulations oh. on the ashes. All anyway. of you guys, yeah, that's right. All of you guys watching mm. and Kate Nank Nankerville's just popped back in. Lovely to see you. Rachel okay. Thompson said drinking wine during the day. Your life sucks, Monique. I know. Yeah, it's a hard job. Okay, so this is the Pinot Gris there in the middle. All right, so... Um, uh, now, I've seen this one several times at the supermarket. Yeah. Kind of walked past it. Kind of walk, walked past it like this. Look, at, do you know what I mean? <laughs> As you do when you're walking down the wine aisle. But well, like when you were single in a bar. Not Perfect. Quite sure. Yeah, not quite sure. Yeah. How's it, how attractive is that one? <laughs> okay, so this was the one you opened the first. Again, why have we not chilled this? So Pinot Gris, uh, it's an aromatic variety. So mm. what that gives you the hint of is that it's about the aroma. The more you chill something down, so in winter, you walk down the street, not much smells. Now that we're into Whoa. spring and into summer, you walk down the street and everything's open. It's warm and it's and That's all true. of all of the flavour thiols that are carried in the air are open and alive because everything's warm. The minute you chill it down, so good. if you don't like a wine, chuck it in the fridge. Chill it down. <laughs> really? Suddenly it's drinkable. Yeah, yeah, right? <laughs> but it, first of all, give the... Give, that's a wine incredible. the chance to actually impress you. So this, mm. 18 to 14 bucks, made out of um, the Yalen's Estate Group. Now, Marlborough, but actually Awatiri, which is over the, you know, the Wither right. Hills, like the famous Wither Hills on the other side. I do. Is That's Awatiri where, where my family are from. Oh, okay, so, yeah, right. Yeah. So um, recently devastated by earthquakes. But, okay, Marlborough, in my opinion, just a little bit better. Right, uh, and, and look, I mean, that's not fair because Marlborough makes great wine, but Awatiri consistently, if I was going to take a pick, the wines there are habitually terrific. And look at this, a Pinot Gris. Beautiful. That dry, structured, balanced, mm. I mean, it's that, it's that that perfect balance of... It's really lovely. That's all I've got. Yeah. <laughs> 18 bucks um, f at, at full retail. Can special down to $14. That's def I have to tell you guys, that is definitely going on my Christmas list. Hmm. This is my wine for Christmas. But the reason I want to give it's you the great. pricing in terms of saying, okay... Um, at full price, that's going to be 18 You see it on special at $14, get six. Like, get yeah. six. Because that is a great Definitely. value wine. You know, you're never going to regret And so for me, what is that? It's got delicacy and it's got that light, easy to drink appeal of a Pinot Gris, but it's got a bit of structure, right? Yeah, it's it's not, got a it's bit of taut seemed, muscularity to it. It seems right? like it's quite full bodied. It's, you know what I mean? Well, for me, it's more of a gymnast or a dancer, right? Oh, okay. I mean, it's kind of ripped. A ripped every, every bit of muscle in there is functional, right? So this I one, like, it. like a dance, hasn't spent too much time in the, in the gym. This is all elegance. It and is elegance, finesse, right? actually. So do you have to check this one yeah. out in your supermarket? This is a must-have. So is this if you're a rosé drinker, but this, definitely, definitely, because Pinot Gris is normally my yeah, go-to. Yeah, it's pretty much a go-to wine, right? You're going to mm -hmm. smash that. So I'm going to grab another glass. No, 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 don't. Don't do that. I'm really glad we've only got two glasses, even though the help... Oh, seriously? The help did put one uh, to yes, the side there. Yes, yes, that's true. Now, um... You don't have to get a fresh glass all the time. So we've just drunk a Pinot Gris, and what we're going to do now is go to mm -hmm. a red, right? So, so a I Merlot Cabernet, yeah. I, um, inside, oh, I'm crying. No, no, you become a blending winemaker. <laughs> no, honestly, I've got a mate of mine, right? He, he makes a bit of wine. He sells a lot of wine. Yeah. He knows an awful lot about wine, far more than I do. He's a master of wine, which maybe okay, we'll talk perfect. another day. But um, we're drinking a wine at his place, and he's like, oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. Oh, pretty good to me. We're drinking a Riesling. He rips out at his place, goes and gets, I think it was a Gewurz. Yeah. Might have been a Pinot Gris. And so, pulls a splosh of that in my glass, splosh of that. And I'm like, oh, and it's like, oh yeah, and he goes, yeah, really? isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, here's it the thing. you his own wine. Yeah, but here's the thing about wine, right? Like, it's it's meant to be for you to enjoy, right? So, yes. I mean, why would you not? In, in all seriousness, like, what are the rules? What, the winemakers are going to go, how dare you fool with my art? <laughs> You know, like, no, right? <laughs> it's there to be enjoyed. And, look, and here's the thing on why I'm really keen oh, to talk so about good. supermarket wines, is what's, what's the best wine um, in the world? There's two elements to it. One is you can get your hands on it, and that means you can either convince someone to give it to you or you can afford it. And for me, it's can I afford it? And the second thing is, do I like it? If I can yeah, afford it and true. I like it, that's a great wine. Yeah, that's so true. I don't, so I don't if it care suits what your budget and you yeah. enjoy it, and remember, if it tastes pretty Boom. bad, put it in the fridge. That's what I've got out of today. <laughs> right. Excellent. Rachel Thompson missed the name of your Christmas wine. It is the Crossings Pinot Gris. This is from the Awatere Valley. Beautiful. Christmas wine.
that is a winner right there. Uh, on on sale, you'll probably get that for fourteen dollars. Yeah. yeah, eighteen to fourteen is what it sits at. Look, and that Mister, that Mister Rosé, yeah, that, I mean, is, that is a pretty wine for a, a, a Christmas lunch. So. I was going to say that yeah. is very much a Christmas lunch. You might do a nice salmon dish with it. Well, you might. Thank you. I, I'd, just, I'd just do a conversation, frankly. Perfect, you know? perfect. All right. So, Excellent. So this is the third one. So yeah, this whilst is you were crying, while, Whilst you were crying, tipping your Pinot Gris I into was. your um, Mr. Rosé, right? Yes. Why, you don't need to wash the glass because smell that. It's completely over patterned. Now you want, now wow. you want to talk about... Wow. You know, the, 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 this has got a lot of muscle to it. it. Oh, wow. So you don't, you don't need a fresh glass, right? Wow, because that kind of takes over everything. So... Price on this, we've, we've taken a jump up on price. We've gone to full retail. This is going to be about 20. Yep. <laughs> is, that, is that a good face? That's a, a great face? face. It's like velvet in your mouth. Ooh, stop it. <laughs> it is amazing. So tell you what, here's one, here's it's one thing. It's beautiful. You might look at that and you go, hang on, 28 bucks, 23 bucks on special. That's a bit of a stretch. Mm. I don't know if you've noticed on the label, but if you have oh, a look lovely. down here, right, you'll see one really important thing. It's 2013. It's a 2013. Oh red right, wine. so it's an older wine. Right. It's got a. It's been cellared for a while. Yeah, look. I mean, you, you go in, and most of the wines you're going to find that are red are going to be 16 on a lucky day of 15. Right, 17s are starting to come onto the shelf now in terms of red. It's a 2013 red. Now, so the longer you have a red, the better the flavour. Not, right? not with all wines, right? But certainly with the bigger, with the bigger reds. But. Look, I'm a nightmare to shop wine with, right? So I'm going, okay, I'm going to get one. I'm going to foss it through the back and have a look. And this is what I love about those little wine stores. You know, if you're going on Christmas holidays and you're out at Matapodi and you go to the local, they probably don't sell a lot of the wine within there. Yes. So have a reach to the back and you're like, oh, this. Oh, right. you'll, find that you'll find the real hidden yeah, so it's a bit older, a bit, a bit grown up, a bit softer. And this, so the velvet, as opposed to, I mean, it, it should have come out like a boxer, right? Yeah. If it was a baby, but it's not. It's grown up. It, no, it's, it really just wants to give you a cuddle. It, now. That's exactly what it yeah. feels like in your mouth. Absolutely <laughs> incredible. Just a whole different experience. <laughs> These ones are light and pretty, and like, oh yes, let's have a lovely time. This one is, I love you. I will marry you. I am like a very cuddly jumper. <laughs> I, you can tell I'm no wine expert, but that's exactly what it feels no, no, like. To me, that's it's the way to talk about wine. Right? And tasty. And I'm thinking of Christmas cake. So when it. Oh. Now that, now you're right in the middle of wine, I was going to say use an unpl- right, but, but wine snobby character. Yeah, like, oh, Christmas, cake, Christmas cake is a character within there, but you talked about that soft and the jumper thing. That's what Merlot does, right? So you see it's oh. a Merlot and a Cabernet Franc. The Cabernet Franc is a smaller part of the blend, but the Merlot's all about that cuddle. It's wow. soft and it's round. And I had no exactly idea. So by knowing things like oh. that, so knowing knowing that, you know, if those are the characteristics you're looking for, because I know I walk through and I go, okay, it's a rosé, I get what that is, a gewürz. I believe that's So Pina's going to come out and want to dance a salsa with you, right? And it yeah. all sits up straight and it's all a bit angular and skinny and, and all that. And that's, I mean, that's fun, right? And that's yes. good. That's good. But when you're home in front of Netflix, you just want a bit of a cuddle, right? And that's why you have a Merlot. <laughs> it's such right? a great right, really? description. I don't, I don't want to watch Netflix with an angular, bony salsa dancer. I just want to just... Oh, you're funny. Just a little bit, right? So <laughs> that's, that's, really that's cool. what the Merlot is. And wow. The cab- and then if you're looking for something just that, you know, okay, we've been watching Netflix for a few years now, darling. It's getting a bit tedious. Oh, let's put some Cab Franc in there. Ooh. Oh, and that gives it a little edge. Yeah, it does, right? Just, so when you're looking at the label, that's the kind of thing to, to, to start... To look for is on a red wine. Look, just That's take so cool. a look. If you can see at a decent price, something's got a couple of extra years on it. Doesn't always apply with whites. Pretty much always applies with the reds. What an opportunity! Look, twenty. It's going to sit around twenty-five bucks, and you've got an almost five-year-old red wine. That's going to hug you. It is. is, I love that. Mm. Excellent. Look, this is really great. Oh, Rachel Thompson. Oh, man, this show is made for me. Love Gewurz. I'm so jealous. Um, And she's actually just said 2013 was a great vintage. Love the name Te Awanga. So So Te Awanga, um, Hawke's Bay, you head out to Napier. You head past the, what, the Mangatanoika Tui Brewery on the right. Head out and there's just a couple, go past Elephant Hill. Beautiful, beautiful vineyard out there. And you find this little spot. Boom. And nice pronunciation because the locals, yeah, and those things thing called Tia Wonga. Never heard of it. Tia Wonga, no. there we are. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. perfect. So, again, Rod McDonald wines. Lovely. Um, pretty much everywhere. 
Mm. I'm, glad, I'm really glad you like that. Yeah, really nice. So I'm not traditionally a red, red wine drinker. I, I drank it for a couple of years for the health benefits uh, because I heard it was good for your blood pressure and those sorts of things. And the heart. Laying and the heart. Control, and, yeah. yeah, that's yeah. right. Uh, however, I always come back to our lovely Pinot Gris as my default factory setting, I mm. have to say. But this has been an amazing experience. What I'd love to do with you, actually, Timothy, is yep. to put together a list of the wines you might see, not the actual wine brand, but if you're looking for a Gewurz, well, what it's going to mean to you, what the experience is going to be like. Sure. That description of the Merlot, I've learned so much was it about Ra- that. Was it Rachel who talked about the Gewurz? Yeah, Rachel Rachel, great said. call, right? So most people are scared of Gewurz because it's hard to pronounce, don't know what it is, and, and it can be sometimes a bit sweet, sometimes quite dry, but here's what it is. It is the ultimate food wine. And what I found with Gewurz is people say, oh, I don't like it. Just give them a Gewurz, and they go, oh. Well, it's I'll nice. Like. Ask them if they like Gewurz, they go, oh, no. Give them a glass and just say, try that. And say, oh, love it. Yeah. Beautiful. Great. Now, she's just asked, what was yeah, well the name done. of the, she said, I love a gutsy red that's velvety. Name, oh, please. Te Awanga. Te Awanga from Rod McDonald Wines. Um, so this is the Merlot Cab Franc. You're going to spend about 25 or a special down to 23. I mean, that's a ripper of a wine. They make a Syrah as well. I mean, if, if you see that brand, yeah, look, that description, if you can, if you can stretch 25 bucks, buy it. You will yes. love it. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. And I forgot to say a big shout out to everybody watching on Periscope today because I know there's a whole bunch of you guys who have been sending hearts and um, comments through. Sorry I've missed your comments there, mm. but do keep coming back to the show. We're here every week. Joe Timorenga, lovely to see you watching from Wellington. Cindy Price, Herbert Brofo, Jude Hart. Hello, lovely. Lynette Glory, great to see you guys. And then uh, Rachel Thompson has just said, I'm from Napier. Why am I working? Good. That's right. You need to be here in the studio uh, because this, my friend, is work. Loving it. Gewurz is like a bouquet of flowers, she said, and good with spicy food. Yeah, perfect. Uh, yeah, that's exactly what it is. I perfect. Think you should take my spot, Rachel. Oh, no, she's a professional wino, much like myself. Okay, so final notes. Mm. Uh, the ho- rosé, Mr. Hawks rosé. Mr. Yeah, Mr. The Mr. Hawks Mr. Bay. Mr. Series, that's so from Hawks Bay, Rod McDonald's wines, yeah, but the Mr. Series, they, they, they also make a Pinot Gris, which is lovely. They make a Chardonnay, a Hawks Bay Save too. Yep, but yeah, Great. Go for so the, the things you've said, it's affordable. Rosé can be two things, tart, but and nobody also, likes but hanging it out with the tart. It's, nobody likes hanging out with the tart. Yeah, and it's not sick as well. Present company accepted, yes. no one likes hanging out with the tart. I Perfect. love it. That's not a reference to you, though, Monique. But I'm happy to take that. Um, so yeah, you've said full, uh, full flavoured, and I love this description you've written about it. It's like a dancer on point, yep. the perfect mix of taut and seductive. That's so that is your rosé right there. Uh, normally retails for around twenty two. You can get it as low as eighteen dollars in buy your supermarket. It. Yeah, buy it, buy it, buy it's it. It's as pretty as the label looks. It, really <laughs> it certainly is. is. This is the crossings from our our our, our Teddy Valley. Mm, mm. Um, amazing wine, my favourite Pinot Gris. This is my must have definitely for summer. Uh, Priced around $18 on sale. You'll find it for $14, but get out of my way because I may buy the entire lot. It's from the Marlborough region, but it's amazing, even better than the traditional wines you might get from uh, Marlborough. It's very fragrant, perfumed, light-bodied. This is a good wine that you want to share with friends and enjoy. At its price point, it's a bargain. Very, very, very good. And finally, the Te Awanga Merlot Cab Franc, 2013. It's a little bit fancy, but it's like a giant velvety hug for your mouth. (laughs) Great for Netflix and chill, my friends. Um, $28 retail, or you may find it on special 2013, pretty much, oh, sorry, $23, pretty much everywhere. Mm. These are very, very good wines. These are not the wines you're going to be using for your cooking, my friend. You will have none <laughs> left over. It would be a waste. It, it really would be a was. complete waste. Yeah, Buy an $8.95 really $8. bottle for that. Yeah, boom, boom. And, and yep. At the most. At the most, at mm. the most. Well, Timothy, this has been a lot of oh, fun. Hey, look, last thing. If, you, if you've oh, got yes. a really cheap red and you're not happy about it, leave it open for a day or two. Try it again. Ooh, Just try it. I like that a lot. Or you could make mulled wine with it. I hate mulled wine. Okay, let's leave that right there. Oh. Right there. <laughs> anyway, it is time for us to head away. Look, thank you so much nice for coming into you. the studio. I have learned so much today. Keep an eye out. We've got more episodes talking all about wine coming up for you guys over mm. the summer. Very excited to talk about that. One of my favourite subjects. And remember, as always, please drink responsibly. Look after your health. Drink water as well, please. Oh, good idea. Because you're not... Uh, you're not oh, invincible. Yeah. In the meantime, a very big thanks to all of the people who support our show. Kathy Organics for my lovely skincare. Romina from Argentina for ripping off my moustache every fortnight. <laughs> to OBR Merino for my lovely blue top I'm wearing today and all of my Merino products. Uh, Fabulae Vu for my gorgeous jewellery. Helen, I love you. Evelyn Rose Lashes for my artificial extensions on my eyelashes. I mean, Did you yours. think these were real? Yeah. Thank you. That's oh. Evelyn Rose Lashes. <laughs> and finally, 
finally, if you've got a great, great product or a brand that you'd love to get some exposure for, that's what we do here at Your Fix TV. So if you want to feature on the show, we're looking for products, brands, and people with great stories. Charities, we love sharing your story as well. All you need to do is hit me up, send an, an email to info at yourfix.tv. That's how we do things. It's actually quite fun. It is fun, isn't mm. it? And remember, I want to hear from you. What do you want to see on our show? Maybe you're struggling to find the perfect jeans, or maybe you want to know what to do with your hair this season or how to perfect the perfect smoky eye. Mm. That's what this show is here to do, to provide education, information, mm. and have a little bit of fun. It's all about food, living, and mm. lifestyle. Final comments coming through. Thelma and Louise have their Christmas bash coming up soon, and yes, we will be buying 10 of each of these wines for sure. <laughs> can, go, can I come to the party? Or Excellent. Or are you going to stretch out I'll hook you summer? up. He's available for parties. He'll, he'll be a consultant. That would be a very good um, And finally, Rachel Thompson just said, Rosé name, please. I missed it. The Mister. So Rod McDonald's wine, it's from the, the Mister series. I mean, look at that beautiful label. You're, 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 there you go, Rachel. I mean, that's going to stand out, right? It's art Fine in a right. bottle. We'll just tip it up straight and tilt it Yeah. That so way. it's the Mister series from Rod McDonald Wines. There you go. Retail between 23 Oh, uh, that can go as low as 18 yeah. $18 right there. That is your must-have drop for the summer, I would say, Rachel. Mm. You know what, team? It's time for us to go. Blaze Bradley, shout-out to you, my beautiful niece. Great Aww. to have you on the stream. Little, little. Yeah, yeah, right. Pretty awesome. I imagine I'm not taking any of these home, right? They're, they're now... Well, you know, we're going to have to do more <laughs> testing this afternoon. And remember, team, please be careful out there. Pete Ward, thank you so much for looking after today's show. Tim, again, thanks for being it's here. He's good, isn't he? He's all right. It's effortless. I know yeah. it is. It's a lot of work, though, just saying. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> time to head away. It's been a load of fun. Kaki te whanau. Yep, kaki te anō. Remember, be careful out there because 98% of people are caused by accident. Love you guys. <laughs> See you next time. Bye. This could help with the accident, right. actually. <laughs> mm, time. Time.